in the workshop once again featuring a diabolical model steam engine this one is part eight securely mounting the engine to the baseboard and fitting a taper pin to the piston rod plus an experiment with depression and maybe a possible fix here's the story so far showing the engine on the baseboard ready to bolt down to the baseboard because at the moment it's just sat there this by the way is nothing to do with depression yes one could become depressed working on an engine of this quality but thankfully I don't suffer at all from depression I go the other way I go as high as a kite and my brain overspeeds anyway for now it's on with the job Because this engine has been screwed to this baseboard, the holes are already partially there. I'm drilling them, though, all the way through the board. Once I'd done that, I needed to counterbore the holes from underneath to take some long 5BA bolts. I've selected a quarter-inch drill bit, and here it is, and so I know how far I'm drilling into the baseboard and marking it with a felt-tip pen. As is clearly shown here, and by using this method, it tells me when to stop drilling, because I do not want this quarter of an inch diameter hole to go all the way through the baseboard. The original hole was drilled at one eighth of an inch diameter, which is clearance size for 5BA. And here, I'm screwing the bolt into the hole. In this clip, you can see it just protruding from the engine's base plate on the left hand side. All I need to do now is find a suitable 5BA nut and here it is, and then tighten the screw from underneath. This is really not difficult to do, and in no time at all, the first of the mountings is very solid. I'm using the existing bolts that came off the engine to just loosely reassemble the connecting rod to the crank pin, and also the connecting rod to the crosshead pin. As you can see here, the fit is very sloppy, but I'm not going to do anything about that for the moment. I will save that until the next episode. At this stage, I'm only really interested in the position of the piston at each end of the stroke, and it's looking good. You can see here that the piston is a slightly lesser diameter than the cylinder. This is intentional because of the working tolerances of the other components. I did cover this in a previous episode. I've tightened the pinch bolt onto the piston rod, and it's time for some compressed air. To see what happens when the valve rod's in the correct place, does it rotate the flywheel? The airline is connected, and I turn on the air. And the piston and rod disappear over the other side of the workshop. Here is a slow motion replay. And just in case you missed that, here is an even slower slow motion replay. What a very nice sound, I can even hear the piston rattling about on the floor somewhere over the other side of the workshop. I soon found it lurking in the corner and everything's okay, but obviously this is not going to be a very suitable method of holding the piston rod in place in the crosshead with the extremely large hole in it. Because of the build quality of this engine, I'm working to that standard, so please don't write in to tell me how to do it. Because surprisingly enough, after 54 years, I already know. That is why I make simple tutorial videos to give people the benefit of my experience. What I'm doing here is drilling a pilot hole through the piston rod. Because eventually, after a lot of taper reaming, I'm going to fit one of these things. This is a taper pin. The hole in the crosshead is still too big but I'm not going to currently do anything about this unless it poses a problem when I get the engine running. I live in hopes. I've always been an optimistic type of person, a very hyperactive optimistic type of person. As I've got older, I've slowed down. But unfortunately, not much at all. I speak slowly on these videos so you can understand, I hope, what I'm saying. Normally I speak much quicker than this when I'm speaking to people that I know, because they can understand what I'm saying, but this wouldn't be any good at all if I used it on the videos. I've always been hyperactive. I once scored 24 
on a questionnaire about adult ADHD, and it said if you score 11 or more, you need to go and see a doctor. I was initially given a drug called phenobarbitone. Way back in 1957, just to slow me down and to make my brain actually go to sleep, which it didn't used to do. But I embrace this condition. It makes it possible for me to do, at almost 71, things that people half my age struggle with. I want to talk about depression, which is something I've never suffered from, but I do know what it is. Especially a friend of mine called Gerald. And Gerald, who is an electronics engineer, really has suffered with personal depression for many years, since he was a teenager. He called in to see me a few weeks back, and when he was at the door, I couldn't believe how much better he looked than normal, and I said to him, What's wrong with you, Gerald? He even up to the point of me noticing that the grey cloud that used to be around Gerald's head had disappeared, and he looked for the first time in his life miles better than usual. I said, come on then, Gerald, tell me the secret. I'll explain about that shortly. I don't want to do too much on things not to do with steam engines, because some viewers object to it. I once made a video about my prostate cancer, which thankfully at the moment seems to be very slow at doing what it's supposed to do. And I was really surprised when I got a comment from a viewer that said, I don't want to know about prostate cancer, I just want to watch about steam engines. That was quite unbelievable, but such is life. When you make things and go public with them, people comment. Some comments are good, some are bad, and some are just really stupid. Stainless steel is quite hard stuff to ream with a taper reamer or even a normal reamer. You must keep going applying steady pressure, because if you don't and the reamer starts to rub on the stainless steel, then it will work harden and you have a problem. I had to shorten one of the taper reamers because it was too long to go through the hole to the extent I needed it to do. Doing this allowed me to make the hole to the correct diameter so I could use a larger reamer in it. OK then, back onto the subject very briefly about depression. A disclaimer. The following information is based on my opinions and life experiences. I am not a doctor and I can accept no responsibility whatsoever for the application of what I'm about to say in this video. A doctor advised my friend Gerald to take some vitamin D at 4,000 strength, starting off by taking two a day. At this stage I must add that the doctor said to my friend Gerald, this is off the record. After two or three days, Gerald went down to the normal one a day, at a strength of 4,000. Because vitamin D dissolves in fat, apparently, I think it's quite difficult to overdose on it. I did a bit of reading up about vitamin D, and apparently, vitamin D is a hormone, and that explains a lot. Insulin is a hormone. Mine doesn't work right, and I'm diabetic. I started taking vitamin D just to see what it did to me, and Gerald and I, on a weekly basis, compared notes. We figured out that it moves the baseline about between two brain chemicals, dopamine and serotonin, and possibly others. I'm not a doctor or a scientist or a chemist. This is just an observation from a couple of lifelong friends. But whatever the reason, it certainly fixed my friend Gerald. No more depression, a changed person. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Right, that's enough reaming. I'm really fed up of this now. I'm using an electric drill to get all the way through with a larger reamer. And if I do much more of this, I will need to take some vitamin D. Years ago, I had a blood test that showed in my case, I have slightly elevated dopamine levels, which explains a lot. The voices in my head when I was younger and the snapshot type visions that I still get periodically are probably related to the increase in the level of dopamine in my brain. But I like it. My glass is definitely always half full, or often full to the top. That's it for the depression interlude. Now I'm showing the taper pin that I've tapped into the hole. This is not going to be the final one, because I need to make some slight adjustments to level up the crosshead. This is an age-related, quality of manufacture, 
sympathetic restoration, so I don't want to do anything extreme at the crosshead. I will be adjusting the bearings. I can't leave them like this. Here I'm gently tapping the taper pin into position with a very small hammer. And the piston still goes back and forth. Well, it would do, wouldn't it? Look at the clearance between the crosshead and the crosshead guide. I thought I'd take this opportunity to clean up certain parts of the engine you can't see, like the underneath of these guide bars, which are a bit rough. That's not a good description, really, because all of this engine is a bit rough, but underneath the guide bars was even worse. If all you have in your life are miniature steam engines, then I'm very pleased for you. Personally, I still get a buzz from fixing them all these years later. But that's it for now. I can take no more. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.